Welcome to Libs 1540 or Libs 1810. In this video will show you very briefly how to do assignment number one. An assignment number one is creating both a weekly and a semester schedule as well as sending an email to your professor. So this assignment is designed to help you know what your schedule is so that you can set goals for a successful semester. <clears throat> it's much, much easier being able to see what it, when your assignments are due than to try and just guess at what they are. This assignment is also to help you understand where to find all the information you need to be a successful student. Also, you will use effective communication with your professor by sending a professional email. This assignment will also help you get to know the learning management system, or what is known as an LMS, or as we call it at Conestoga College, eConestoga. You will be applying critical thinking skills to create a plan for success. And this assignment is also developed to help you develop learning strategies that you can do on your own. And this is what we call the self-regulated learning strategies. Part one of this assignment is the calendars. So you're required to create a weekly calendar for just one week and a semester calendar that covers all four months of the semester. Your weekly calendar will show what a typical week looks like for you. Now I realize it's a little bit difficult creating a weekly schedule at the beginning of the semester. However, remember that this is just going to be an ideal schedule. You'll probably find throughout the semester that you are changing it as you go along. The semester schedule will include all of the holidays and the days off, all assignments, quizzes, and tests. Anything that is worth a mark will go onto your calendar. Your semester schedule will also show when you plan to begin assignments that are worth more than 5%. Remember, planning is a key part to actually achieving our goals. Now, you may use a digital calendar or you can make one using Word or Excel. It's up to you. If you do use a digital calendar, you will have to take a screenshot of that and upload it to the Dropbox. Now, in order to create the semester schedule, you need to look at the instructional plan for each of your courses. It's probably best to download and print all of your instructional plans so that you can see when each of the assignments is due. So in order to get to your instructional plan, you go to eConestoga, choose the course that you want, go to content, and you'll find the instructional plan on the content page. So when you look at eConestoga, when you open it up, this is the landing page, and you'll choose your from your current courses. Select one of these courses. In this case, I have chosen the Libs 1810 student module. Once you have chosen your course, when you open it up, you'll notice that in the top left corner, there is the content button and just click on that. Once you click on that, it will take you to the table of contents and you should be able to find the instructional plan on this page. As I said, it's probably a good idea to download this and keep it in your course binder so that you are aware of what the schedule is and you can see it at a glance. This is just a short example of what a semester schedule might look like if it's created in Word. Now this is just a sample. So you can see in here that the person has decided to start from Monday and go to Sunday. So week one, you can see that the student has decided on Tuesday to start beginning assignment one, which is worth 10%. And you'll notice that in week four, the assignment one is due in the Dropbox and the, 
and the email is also due. You can see also that the student has when to begin reading articles for classes and when to begin pronunciation practice. On the weekends also included is what needs to be done for the coming week. Your schedule will probably be more detailed than all of this and you'll notice that you can actually color code the different courses if you would like. In order to start your semester schedule, you need to step back and look at the big picture. So you need to look at the instructional plans for each of your courses and then mark down all the due dates for the semester. So if it's worth a grade, you need to put it on your semester schedule. Again, if you want to color code the courses to make it easier, you can do that. But make sure that you also put in there what the course is. So you can check your course schedule or your semester schedule to see what the course code is. Be very careful because when you are taking elective courses and when you go into your regular program you need to be concerned about not only the course code which is the four letters and then four numbers but also your section number because your section number will be different depending on the course that you are in. So once you've looked at the big picture you want to start with a semester calendar. So September, October, November, December, or January, February, March, April, or May, June, July, August. Those are the four months that are the semester. So in the semester schedule on the calendar, go back and write down when you are going to start each assignment or start studying. Because remember that planning ahead will help you be successful. Also, when you are creating your semester schedule, remember that assignments at the end or later in the semester often require much more time. So you want to make sure that you leave yourself enough time so that you can contact your professor if you have problems. You also want to add the holidays found in the semester. So if it's the fall semester, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, Student Success Week. If it's the winter semester, then you're looking at Family Day, Student Success Week, Good Friday. And then the summer semester, we have July 1st as a holiday. We also have the Civic Holiday Weekend in August. So you want to make sure that you have those so you don't wind up going to class when you don't need to. <clears throat> Once you have all of this information, you want to add more details. So add any dates you'll know you'll, you'll be busy, such as family birthdays or going to the church or the mosque or a temple. Any dates that you know you have set aside for things like chatting with family back home, going to sporting events, going on outings with friends. You want to add these dates in a unique color or code. And because these dates usually require a larger time commitment, you want to add them so that when you're planning and you're working on your time management, you have enough time to be able to do what you need to do for school, but also be able to enjoy yourself with others. Here's an example of a weekly schedule. So you'll notice that the, it goes from the time the person wakes up until the time they go to bed. They've scheduled some time for themselves at the end of each day to read for pleasure. The weekends are already mapped out and then a couple of courses have been put into this weekly schedule. So again, you want to make sure that you are making a detailed plan, but also you want to leave some extra time in case something comes up. Because we can plan and plan and plan, but the unexpected will always mess up our time management. So when we're focusing on the week, you want to select one week from this month and create a detailed weekly schedule. 
So you want to include your classes, so you want to provide the course code and the section number, study and assignment time, your work schedule if you have one, and any extracurricular events that you or your family might have, so such as swimming lessons for your children, or if you are part of a team or a club, when do you have that? You want to include meal times, time for yourself, and time for physical activity, because a healthy mind and a healthy body work well in order to make, help us become successful students and maintain that success as we go along. Once you've finished your semester schedule and your weekly schedule, you need to go to the Libs 1810 course shell in eConestoga or Libs 1540 if you're taking that course. Click on the course tools, then click on the assignments, Click on the folder name for Assignment 1, click on Add File, upload your assignment, click Add and Submit. So I'll show you where to find all of this. So you go to the courses on eConestoga to your current courses, and in this case we've gone to Libs 1810. And when you click on Course Tools up at the top, you'll notice the drop-down menu and Assignments comes up. If you click on Assignments, it will take you to the assignment. So then you click on Assignment 1, not the attachments, but Assignment 1 itself. When you click on it, this is the page that you will see. But this is just the top of the page, so you need to scroll down to the bottom. And you'll see at the left there is Add a File. So click on Add a File, choose the file from your computer, and then click Add, and then Submit at the bottom. And this will submit your assignment. Once you've submitted your assignment, you then need to send an email to your professor. This needs to be an email from your Conestoga College email account, your Outlook account, that you can get to either through the Outlook app or you can go through Conestoga College website or you can also go through the student portal to get to your email. When you send your professor an email, you want to make sure that the subject line reflects the purpose of the email as well as your section number. So it could be Assignment 1, Section 3. Please note that the section number for Libs 1810 or Libs 1540 is not the same as your section number for your ELS class. After the subject line, you then go into the body of the email and you create a greeting that addresses your professor by their preferred name, not Dear Teacher. So it could be Dear Ms. Moran, Dear Professor Moran, Dear Kathleen. It depends on what your teacher prefers. Then you're going to write two to three sentences expressing the purpose of the email and then answer the following questions. The first question is looking at your semester schedule. How do you plan to get started and keep motivated? The second question is identify items that you, that you might procrastinate on and strategies you will use to personally fight procrastination. The next question is which strategies will you use to help keep you on track or remind you of events? Remember that each of these questions must be answered in full sentences. The next question you want to answer is what do you anticipate happening that could affect this schedule? So do you have to work? Could you wind up being sick or anyone in your family being sick? What are some of the complications that may arise? You will then include a closing paragraph such as it has been fun doing this activity, 
or this activity has been very helpful as I know I will be able to be successful this semester or anything along that line. A closing signature such as regards, yours truly, sincerely, and then your name and your professional signature. If you've never done a signature before, I will show you what you need. So for your professional signature, you need your name, your program, the college address, your college email address, and your contact phone number, which, which is optional. Here's an example of a professional signature. So it has the person's name, the title, the school that they're in, the college address, and the phone number. It has become common now to also add the pronouns that you prefer be used when people address you. This is in order to recognize people who do not identify as either male or female. In my case, I, I identify as she or her. Some people identify as they or them. Other people identify as he or him. It's up to you, but it's generally a good idea to put that in your professional signature. To create an Outlook signature using a, a PC, Log on to Outlook through the Conestoga College website or through the student portal. Then click on Options, click the Email Signature, click the box to include a signature, and then create your signature, much as I have done or I have shown you earlier. Once you've created your signature, click the check mark on the top left corner to save the signature. You can also use the website that is listed here if you are on the mobile app to create your signature. This website is also found on the Word document that you see under Assignments. To create an Outlook signature using a Mac, for the Outlook menu, select Preferences, and then once you get to Preferences under Email, select Signatures. Double click the Untitled and type your own signature, as explained earlier. After you have done creating the signature, close the Editor window. And then on a Mac as well, to add the signature automatically to all your messages, on the Outlook menu, select Preferences. Again, under Email, select Signatures. Once you're on Signatures, under the Choose Default Signature tab, select the account which you'll use the default signature for. So if you have more than one Outlook account, you can use different signatures for those different accounts. If you want to add a signature to all new messages, set the new messages option accordingly. And then if you want to include a signature for all of the messages you reply or forward, then set the replies forwards option accordingly. And close the signatures window. This is how to complete assignment number one. I hope this has helped. If you need further information, be sure to contact your professor.